What's going on y'all, it's the Home Slice Ascend Hyperion. With Halo 3 coming to PC, it also brings a newly expanded Forge mode, which includes both new objects and new tools and features. Whether you're an old head looking to come back to reclaim your former glory, or you're a new pup looking to show your teeth to the original Forge mode, chances are you'll need a little help navigating this iteration of Forge. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a breakdown of the tools, tricks, and features you need to understand if you want to make quality Forge maps for Halo 3 PC. In fact, I can guarantee what you learn in this video will both elevate the quality of your Forge maps and will bolster your workflow. Before we kick things off, be sure you tap that subscribe button and tap that link below to follow me on Twitter. Let's get this thing started. Remember how back in the old days you had to use weird elaborate tricks to get objects to pass through each other? Well those days are over. The three physics states have been added to Halo 3 Forge on PC. These states affect how the object interacts with the world around it while manipulating the object. Objects on normal physics are subject to collision and gravity. They will fall from where you let go of them and bounce off of other objects. This is useful for dynamic objects on your map, like fusion coils or crates. Things set to fixed physics are only subject to collision, so while they'll collide or move against other things, they can be placed free of gravity and actually will retain their location when let go. This is great for when you want to place things like debris in a believable fashion on your map, but you don't want them to shift during play. Finally, we have phased physics. This setting is most likely going to be your go-to, as it allows objects to be manipulated free of collision and gravity. Using phased physics, you can combine objects in interesting ways to create unique geometry and smooth edges. On top of physics states, Halo 3 now features a 3D coordinate system, on which objects can be moved with high precision. While holding an object, press B to bring up its coordinate info. The game will show where it currently is, and you have the ability to edit these values. This tool is extremely useful for ensuring your objects are properly aligned and can be used for precise distance measurements. Now at the bottom of the same menu is the control for rotational snap. This setting is actually universal, but can be accessed via this menu only. Rotational snap takes the guesswork out of rotating your items. It allows you to rotate your object on fixed degree values and is critical to creating consistency in your maps. I personally use a 15 degree snap for basically any building I'm doing. Now, when it comes to coordinates, you should always establish what I call parameters in your head to make it easier for you to spot and correct errors. These parameters are basically guidelines for where objects should fall on the grid. For example, I can start this map by saying my base elevation should be 40, and I can make sure I work up from there. Or if I know I only want this map to be 100 units wide, I can start at say 50, and I know if I hit 151, I've made a mistake somewhere. Coordinates are unassuming, but in Halo Reach, they helped elevate arena maps to levels of clean geometry that was almost unseen before and was attained much easier than before especially. Make sure you're using coordinates on your map at the absolute least for clean geometry. Perfection. Another cool feature deals with runtime minimums and maximums. These control the number of an object on a map at any given point in time. Let's say you want to place 10 BRs on a map, but you always want 5 spawned and ready to pick up. By setting the minimum to 5, you'll be able to do that. Conversely, let's say you have rocket launchers on your map, but you only want one accessible at a time. Setting the maximum to one will do this. There are several neat features that pertain to movement and manipulation that you should know about. For example, if you hold the left trigger while holding an object, you'll enter fast mode and you'll move, you know, fast. If you hold the left bumper instead, you'll enter precision mode, which will allow you to slow down and make shorter distance adjustments with your object. Don't worry if you can't really align it freehand like this, go into the coordinate menu and make those small adjustments. Now, Halo 3 Forge does lack many of the tools and features we've gotten used to in later iterations of Forge, such as magnets and duplication. You'll have to adjust your workflow a bit to get used to this, so here's some tips. Since we can't duplicate, 
If you know you're going to use a ton of a certain object, go ahead and spawn a bunch nearby. It doesn't matter if they get a little displaced. When you select them and adjust the snap, they'll hook onto a flat value in that snap and be ready to move into your map. Not having magnets can be a daunting barrier, but don't worry. Get really used to using coordinates to make those smaller adjustments to get objects flush. Start with precision and finish it up with a coordinate value. Now I actually like to give objects a small overlap in order to remove gaps or inconsistencies. Halo 3 Forge PC will take a second to get used to, but if you can master using these new tools and features, you'll see your creations get much cleaner, your workflow will improve, and your total quality will jump. Remember, Forge is a learning process. The only way you'll get better is if you suck, at least at first. Create, play, learn, and create again. Now that you're armed with the knowledge, get out there. But before you go, make sure you tap the subscribe button, switch on notifications, and share this video with anybody looking to create cool things in Forge. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later.